Well, I guess let's let's start with that. You're you're a beloved figure in the Dodgers and Padres and just baseball community in general. Yeah, in general. Uh, why are you, why do you want to jump into the most uh, dysfunctional community in probably the United States? Well, I've been tested. and I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I um, and we just talked a minute ago. Uh, first came here in September 1st of 1969. Uh, Dodgers called me up and put on a Dodger uniform for the first time and my dreams came true and it was the beginning of a wonderful career and, and becoming a Californian. And um, I was from Florida, uh, I thought Florida was great, but uh, once I started to live day in and day out in the California, I realized how, how great this state was. And uh, after I retired, I started building businesses and getting involved in the community and, you know, the, the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you realize why. In the late 70s, I started to realize I had a voice that was recognizable. Um, I was trusted, and I could do a lot of things in, in the community. And that's where I really kind of built uh, the day I was born type of thing, you know. And then uh, all of a sudden, in March of this year, um, I turned the TV on in the morning, and, and I saw a, a snarkiness between people that were supposed to be representing us and not themselves and not an individual party. And I tapped my wife on the shoulder and I said, honey, let's see if we can make a difference. Let's run for the Senate. And she turned over like a good wife does. And then she turned back and said, aren't you a little young for this? <laughs> I said, well, I can overcome my youth. And uh, turned 75 a couple weeks ago, but three months ago uh, we, we announced. It took me, it took me four or five months to, to go around California talk to the people, uh, have them tell me what their life is, is all about and what their, their stresses are and what they expected California to be and do for them. And, uh, and finally I said, there's no other voices. You know, this is almost a one-party state. Uh, and if you're a conservative or a moderate and you want to run, uh, people will tell you there's, there's no chance. You don't have a chance here. Well, I've, I've always accepted a challenge. And, um, and we're off and running, and I've always said I never took the field for Republicans or Democrats or Independents. I took the field for all the fans, and now I'm running for all the people. You will be running up against three Democrats that are in this debate, uh, in their three experienced House members. Uh, what are you looking most forward to in that, and, and, and do you feel like you're all prepared enough to go into the debate stage? Well, you know, for 45 years I, I uh, had interaction with the press. Yeah, but it was sports and entertainment. Once in a while, politics. I used to introduce President Reagan during his campaign stops. And uh, so I, um, I was a, a kind of a grassroots, you know, ground game kind of moderate. Um, and when I, I, I took on this task, I knew it would be daunting simply because uh, over the years, and especially the last two or three decades, uh, this state is not the heartbeat of America that I know. It's more of a murmur now. And uh, we're going to have a debate, um, but I'm not debating them. I'm not running against them. Uh, I'm running for the people of California. I'm running for their needs. I'm, I'm listening to them. And what they've told me is their elected politicians don't listen to them. They tell them that their life's fine. They tell them that, as a matter of fact, you should pay more taxes because you're living in California. And these people, when I talk to them, spend 10, 15 minutes telling me how tough their life is how they wake up in the morning and they're challenged by the daily needs of the family and how they get in the car and they go to the gas station and, uh, and they see hardworking Californians like themselves getting gas. And it's net, not 10 gallons anymore, it's $10. Uh, and they go to the grocery store and, and food is 35 to 40% more. Uh, housing is, is much more costly. Young adults, 25 to 35, have no chance of, of buying a home or even an apartment now. Interest rates are too high, mortgages are too high. So my thrust is about, about the Californians and their way of life uh, and how it needs to improve and, and to be their voice, to be their messenger, uh, to have them be the wind beneath my, beneath my wings. And at this time next year, be the next elected senator from the state of California and start to go to work uh, with common sense, with compassion and consensus building. What did you learn today from your trip out to see uh, some of Kern County's agriculture? I know you made it a big point of wanting to tour the state and talk to people before you started talking a little bit more to the press. You know, over the years I've been here frequently. Uh, actually, I had a junior high named after me in Lindsay, California, which is about an hour 
you know, out east. Very honored, by the way. Um, but you never get a chance to, to get truly into the community. I've spoken here. I've been here for charity events. Uh, but today was a, an eye-opener about this, this vast, almost global agricultural community um, that, that has stresses. It has regulations and demands, and, and they're hardworking and they're generational. Uh, they just want to give back to the land and to the people, not only California and the United States, but the rest of the world. Uh, so they need, uh, they need to write, the right to breathe too. They need the right to, to be able to determine their destiny. They need somebody to stand up for them. Uh, things like water. Uh, they need water to uh, produce these crops. And they're doing a great job independently of, of the state government in uh, being able to provide that. But you still need somebody to, to uh, be the messenger and tell people about this great county in this area uh, and to get up every day and go back for them. What do you think about the concerns about a, whether or not a Republican can win this state? Because it seems like the idea is that this is a solid blue state, it's not going to change at all, no matter how quality a Republican candidate that might be running, and being that you'll be the only one on the stage, you maybe have a really good chance of making that runoff. Do you think that uh, you can win this uh, election when it comes down to two people? Well, I asked people a couple of questions, and one of them is, do you believe Washington is dysfunctional? And they nod their heads. And do you believe elected officials that you elected are career politicians who are running for a job, or are they representing you every day? And they nod their heads. And at this point in my life, I've had a fabulous life. Maybe, just maybe, this is my destiny, to be able to represent the people of California, and of course the country in this federal position, and to turn around what is, uh, what is slowly being uh, the world looking down at America instead of looking up at America now. And uh, we've got to turn that around. And yes, there hasn't been a conservative in this position for, what, 30 years, 35 years? And people say, what do you think about that? I'd say, well, we're due. 